Two women go missing in separate cases spanning decades, and when police have nowhere else to turn, they come to North Texas for help. The 33's Daniel Novick is here now with an inside look at the UNT Center for Human Identification. Amanda, it is really an amazing place. Some of the best and brightest in the world of forensics and investigative genetics live and work here in North Texas, trying to identify the remains of people that no one has seen in years or even decades. Gabriela Aguila left her family's North Richland Hills home in October 2004 and never came back. Seattle resident Carrie Mae Hardy went missing in 1972. While their cases are not related, they share two things in common. Their remains were positively identified last week. And the work that went into that ID all took place on the other side of this door at the UNT Center for Human Identification. When we make identifications associations, it's usually when there's nothing left. They're, they've exhausted every opportunity, every technique um, to try and identify these victims. The first step is getting the DNA off the remains. In many cases, that's quite a challenge. But the greater challenge is finding matching DNA, preferably from the maternal line of a family. May's remains were found September 2010 in the forests of Washington State. Remains that could have been there for nearly four decades. May's mother provided a DNA sample. We need families to voluntarily provide a reference sample of their DNA so that we can compare it to that of the human remains. Aguila's skull and bones were found near I-35 in the hill country. But connecting the remains to Aguila was a lengthy process. It's not like what you see on CSI. People think that we can do this work in 37 minutes plus commercials and uh, solve the case, arrest the guy and try him and, uh, and put him away. Both the Aguila and May families now have closure about what happened to their loved ones. I couldn't even imagine the pain that these families go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Even if it's the closure they didn't want to hear. If we're involved, it's typically the worst case scenario, but at least they have they have some knowledge. And since the center opened in 2003, they have successfully identified over 700 remains. Eisenberg tells me the only other place that can do what they do at UNT is the FBI's lab in Quantico, Virginia. Reporting live from the studio, Daniel Novick, The 33 News.